welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy is a two to four player dice rolling tile placement game where we take the role of 15th century princes trying to build the best estate possible. The goal of the game is to have the most victory points at the end of the fifth round in the fifth phase. There are a multitude of ways to get victory points in this game. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at the components, the game setup, and how a phase and round actually works. In the center you have the game board, and then each player will be given their own estate, two dice of the same color, and two tokens of the same color. One tracking victory points and one tracking turn order. Now when it comes to the cardboard components, you have worker tiles, which will allow you to add or subtract from the dice number. Silverlings, which will allow you to take an extra action or gain a victory point at the end of the game. Then we have goods tiles, which you will collect and sell during the game for victory points. And then the estate tiles. There are six different types of estate tiles in this game. The dark green you see here is the castle tile. When placed in your estate, it will give you an immediate extra action. The blue estate tile is the ship. The ship allows you to get all of the goods at a depot and advance down the turn order track. Then we have the gray mines. Gray mines will allow you to get one silver at the end of each phase. Next are the livestock tiles. The livestock tiles are the light green tiles and they're going to be worth the number of animals on the tile in victory points at the end of the game. Then we have the brown building tiles. These building tiles will have different powers based on the building that you do collect and place in your estate. And those powers are located on the player board. They kind of let you know and reference what they do. The last one is the knowledge or the yellow tiles. Now these will have special powers as well and each and every one of those powers is located in the rule book if you need to reference them. And lastly we have the bonus tiles. The bonus tiles are located at the right side of the board and for those if you completely fill all of a particular color on your estate for the first person you're going to get the big tile and if you are the second person to completely fill in a particular color of tile you will get the smaller one now let's go ahead and take a look at the setup for this game okay what you see here is the setup for a two-player game first thing is go ahead and take the tiles and cover up every spot on the board that has a two if it was a three-player game, you would cover up all the twos and the threes. And then if it was a four-player game, you would cover up all of the spots with tiles. Next, you're going to take five stacks of five goods each and place them on the top row, A through E, on your game board to represent the phases. Then you're going to go ahead and give every player their board and two matching dice and matching markers. Make sure you put the markers at zero and on the turn order track, whoever goes first would go on top. Next you're going to place a castle tile in the center of each game board. Now. If this is your first time playing, this is the recommended setup. If you've played this game a few times before, you can use either side of this player board and you can place the castle wherever you would like. Give each player three goods at random. You're gonna notice the red player here has three goods. And then if you get two of the same good, you can stack them on top of each other. Then you'll have one silverling that will go to each player and then we will be ready to start the first phase. Each phase consists of five rounds. To start this first phase, all you would do is take your five goods stacked under the A and place them out in this column on the left side of the board. And that will represent each of the five rounds in this first phase. If it was in between phases, so say phase two and phase three, you would also discard all the tiles on the main board and replace them. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what each round consists of. 
At the beginning of every round, every player will roll their dice. The first player will also roll the white dice. That dice will determine where the good for that particular round will be placed in one of the depots. After everyone has rolled their dice, starting with the first player, we will be taking actions. Each player can take two main actions during their turn. There are four possible actions they can take. The first is to buy a tile from the main game board and place it onto their personal board. The second action is to take one of the personal board tiles and place it into their estate. The third possible action you can take on your turn is to sell goods. Selling goods means that you would have to have a matching dice number and then you would gain victory points based on the number of tiles you're selling and the number of players in the game. The fourth possible action is to take one of your dice and gain two workers. Then we have a bonus action. If you have two silver links during your turn, you can purchase an extra tile from the center of the board. These tiles have a black mark on them, letting you know that they go in that center. After you have finished taking your actions, it will go to the next player, and then once every player has taken actions in that round, the rounds will continue, and then after the fifth round, we will go on to the second phase. The second phase will consist of the same steps that we had in this phase, and then it will continue on until the very last phase, and then of course the last round. Now I'd like to take a moment and talk about victory points, since the most victory points will win you the game. There are multiple ways to get victory points in this game. We've already talked about a few of them, one of them being the goods. By selling goods, you will get victory points. By having silverlings, for each silverling you have at the end of the game, you will get a victory point. And then we've also talked about these estate tiles. The livestock tiles will give you a victory point for the number of animals on the tiles. And then there are victory point bonuses for building and knowledge tiles that you receive throughout the game. And that'll be located either on your player board or on that particular tile. Also, you will get victory points for filling in all of one color, which we discussed with these bonus tiles on the right side of the board. And then lastly, you will get a bonus for filling in a cluster of a color tile. If you fill in a five cluster set of tiles, then you would go right here on your player board and look at how many points you will receive for five tile clusters. And then along with the clusters on the player board, you also will receive a bonus based on the number of phase that you are in. The first phase, if you finish a cluster, you will get 10 bonus victory points for that cluster. And that's how you attain victory points in this game. So once the fifth round and fifth phase is over, all of those victory points you attained during the game will be added up, and whoever has the most victory points will be the most successful prince in Burgundy. <laughs>